All right, I have heard of this name, Noralities, not because I've watched their content before, but a lot of people, when I made that video talking about ReZero, people were like, oh, dude, you should watch this girl's video about ReZero. And this video is too long, but we have parts. And this part, this 12-minute section is called I Didn't Care For ReZero. The overall video is called I'm Tired of Isekai. Now, let's see exactly why. She did not care about ReZero. And listen, I love ReZero. ReZero may be my favorite anime at this point. May, my favorite series I've ever covered on this channel at this point. However, I am completely open to understanding other people's perspectives and why they don't like the show. And if their logic is authentic and genuine, unlike the other dude we watched, perfectly fine. Let's go. Part four, unpopular hot take. I did not much care for ReZero, actually. Okay. ReZero is an isekai that has a time travel mechanic. Yes. Each time Subaru is brutally murdered, he respawns at his last save point, memories intact. Mm -hmm. He has to keep redoing this route until he can get it right, clear it, and start the next route. And this opening visuals that she actually edited in is actually the opening season one. It already hinted from the beginning what, what all these different ones were, all the different loops. True. My favorite Zelda game is Majora's Mask, which is all about reliving the same day over Spoilers. and over again and changing your behavior so that you can progress. And I thought to myself, oh, an isekai with stakes and PTSD and a time travel mechanic that people yeah. say is good. That sounds fun. I okay. will sit down and watch that. So, so she is already a regression enjoyer, especially with dark and... I don't know, just like, it, 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 it gets pretty edgy, right? It gets pretty traumatic. Like, it seems like she enjoys that, so she should enjoy ReZero, however... Oh, I watched it, and guess what? What? It's a harem. Totally not a harem. Ma well... A harem... It's a suit... If you consider all these different girls to be quote-unquote love interest or affectionate, for sure, right? Felt, not really, but Petra is, right? Amelia... I don't really think so. She sees Subaru as a fucking pet dog at this point. Ram, not really. Ram, absolutely. Biko, I'm not really sure. But there definitely are a lot of girls that are affectionate towards Subaru. But despite that, of all the isekais I've seen, and many of those isekais have all the girls just glazing the main protagonist. They love him so much. And after seeing those, I can't say that ReZero is a harem. Absolutely not. In the story so far, at Season 2, Episode 7, I think I'm at, it's pretty much Amelia and Rem, right? And even Amelia doesn't really see Subaru like that right now. Yes, Petra shows affection. Yes, Patra shows affection. Yes, Otto, Suen is showing affection. But I have not once for a second thought that ReZero is an actual harm, or nor is it trying to be one. Male power fantasy. <sighs> Look. Mm -hmm. ReZero is fine, yeah. but the more you watch it, the mm -hmm. more it wears you down. The reason- The more it wears you down? Yeah. Because the runs are so gruesome and so- Sometimes so impossible. There's these points where you thought, like, in Season 1, Shit, Arc 3, we gotta get to the mansion to save Amelia, the cult members are attacking. And then later on, we discover that the white will needs to be subjugated first, right? More impossible challenges are cascaded on top of each other, and it does definitely get- you know, you get worn down by it. But I think that's the point. That mechanic creeps into murder porn. Like, it's gratuitous. And Subaru slips from harmless protagonist into an absolute reprehensible scumbag and a per- Yes, that's the entire point. Subaru succumbs to his sins, and quite often, he dies for his sins. Kind of like Jesus Christ. There's actually a lot of parallels of Jesus Christ- Bible, Christianity, and this show. If you haven't seen the Forbidden Oppa Theory, if you haven't seen, like, 400 years before Christ, no, before Subaru, and the whole point of Jesus Christ dying for other people's sins. I know I just said that Subaru dies mostly for his sins, but other people's sins are also involved. I think there's a lot of parallels, but it, that's the whole point. For this character, the 17-year-old Neat that has done nothing with his life, that is so riddled with arrogance because of his past that we saw in Season 2, to repeatedly fail and go rock bottom, that is brilliant character writing. The complexity and depth is so, so good in an isekai where all the characters, main characters are just flat static characters that just have an OP power, overcomes everything, all the girls just glaze them, and it's just a pure power fantasy trip. Person that I cannot root for. Why can't you root I for him? I sat through 
seven episodes okay. of a fantasy whale being brutally murdered. The whale subjugation was so fucking hype. For 400 years, the kingdom of Lugunica has been terrorized by this fucking whale. And last time, 14 years ago, the sword saint Theresia van Austria went in with a subjugation party and failed. However, this 17-year-old kid shows up out of fucking nowhere, solves one of the kingdom's biggest crises during a moment when the royal family is also gone. It's warring times. Neighboring nations could attack. And Subaru fucking solves this shit and within mere hours later also subjugates the witch's cult led by one of the most active and well-known archbishops, the Sinisloth, Betelgeuse. It is an insane fucking feat to understand the context of the story of the people at this current time and what this random kid has done. It is such a compelling arc. Brutally murdered. And listen, you can call me Ishmael because I've got a white whale of my own to hunt and I'm going to take you down with okay. me. So I'm not really going to spoil anything about ReZero. I'm just going to talk about it in general terms. So far, it doesn't seem like she likes the story because it's a show for dudes. And I agree. Male power fantasy, for sure. Uh, in the beginning shit, right? We're talking about isekai for women, anime for women. I think that in the rom-com genre, quite often the true power fantasy for males is the rom-com genre. Where the rom-com is written by male authors. Where the waifus are literally fucking just perfect beings that have no development and the main character is a loser pathetic virgin unintelligent unathletic fat lazy has done nothing with their life has done nothing to deserve anything and then a perfect girl shows up to save them that is literal power fantasy for males but a rom-com written by a woman that knows what an actual girl is like such as dangers in my heart yamada anna is an amazing character so deep so complex, this 14-year-old kid shows so much insecurity despite being an idol and a model, right? Not, not an idol, but like a model. And you, you see that it's not just a perfect girl. She has her own shit going on and Ichikawa and her develop together. And it is, it is such a good rom-com because the author is a girl and she knows who to write for. Now, let's take that concept to ReZero. A guy is writing it. It is male-centric power fantasy for sure. And I can definitely agree that whatever she wants from an isekai, right, isekai foreman, it is definitely not present here. And she is simply just not the target audience. And I could understand why she would feel this way. The murder, uh, fucking, what's it called? The Betelgeuse murder porn? I don't really know what you're talking about. You think that regressing is simply just an excuse to have all these gory scenes? I never for once thought that was murder porn. And the white whale subjugation? I don't think you even comprehend the actual lore of the show and how much this actually matters to the people living in this show. Therefore, you don't care about the most amazing arc, which honestly, I think arc three quite possibly could be one of the best arcs of anime that I've ever, ever seen in this channel. Yep. Over almost 3,000 fucking videos uploaded on my fucking channel. I think that arc three, ReZero season one, one of the best fucking arcs I've ever seen in anime. It is genuinely such good storytelling and a lot of people get filtered out because they can't comprehend the main character being pathetic and hitting rock bottom and then to build back up like they they see Subaru fuck up and immediately dismiss the show because they're brainless that just expects the main character just to be perfect the entire time that's a boring story i'd much rather have somebody struggle through this in something that i can relate to and then start to root for again except for two episodes which i will give appropriate warning just in case that you do want to you know watch these series so the thing about ReZero is that it's supposed to be a subversive response to the popular wish fulfillment anime like sword art online a subversive wishful response that is such empty generic vague words what are you trying to say sao is a harm i completely agree Kirito the Black Swordsman just being powerful and gathering girls that love him, I agree, but that is not even close to what ReZero is. By showing how horrible and gritty that kind of experience would actually be in real life. Okay. How unprepared and outclassed you would be at every turn from suddenly being thrust into a world where you don't know any of the history or mm. logic. Or she is completely right here and boom, look at this shit. What she said so far is absolutely correct in terms of a uh, complete difference of SAO or Kirito just solves everything so perfectly and everyone just falls for him. But Subaru right now is suffering. I agree. But right here, what is this guy's forbidden Appa theory? Mm-hmm. 
Priscilla eating an apple. Delivered by Al. Mm-hmm. Priscilla, something bad's gonna happen to her, bro. Uh-oh. Or or anything about it. Me, me. But then they also kept and included all of the same generic fantasy nonsense without adding anything more substantial. Are you really gonna shit on my girl Silica and Pina? Leave her alone! Silica and Pina are such an innocent, cute little girl, bro. She is the cutest of all SAO girls. Leave her alone. She's not even part of the harm. She's just chilling. Chill. Anyway, uh, I actually cut about a 10 minute section where I just explained some stuff that happened in episodes 13 and 18. And I was just kind of angry in a sure. way that I don't think was actually very well articulated or very funny. Uh, so this is a revised version. All right. But in truth, I'm not even really mad at ReZero. Okay. I'm just kind of mad at the pitfalls that it falls into and that no one is really addressing these pitfalls. Are the pitfalls literal rock bottom moments that the author intentionally shows that a main character in Isekai can be this low and do such fucked up things and wrong things? If that's the case, that pitfall is an intentional pitfall created to deepen the character to make sure that he's not a boring, just perfect being. Falls. I think because they're invisible to people who haven't been through that kind of experience. But when you look at the circumstances mm -hmm. at hand, not through Subaru's lens, but from the women in his life, a, yeah. a worrying pattern starts to emerge. Such as what? Episode 13 is where the series really started to lose my goodwill, and 18 was the nail in the coffin. Oh, she did not like Rem's I love you and I love Amelia. She did not like that at all. So I'm going to try to explain in a way that makes sense, all right. but also isn't terribly long-winded. Okay. So, Subaru is not supposed to really be a good person. Yeah, agreed. He's a flawed, neat, coming from Japan, has no understanding of the culture here, consistently fucks up. He has a level of arrogance that has no correlations to any of the accomplishments he's made in life, and we know that because of the season 2 backstory. Everything he's done now makes sense. I haven't read the light novels, but from what I've heard, the anime actually smoothed out some of his more abrasive flaws. Which is why the ending of episode 13 feels like a, such an unexpected gut punch. Yes, and it was fucking amazing that a main character in a power fantasy isekai genre is able to make such disgusting faces like a fucking loser. And for us to see all of that and to hit rock bottom, I have so much respect for this author to portray their main character in such a light and then to build him back up and then to cause... And then to, like, commit acts of such heroism as just, like, subjugating the white whale and being recognized as a legend is an amazing comeback story. The long and short of it is Amelia has to attend this very important meeting yeah. where she and several others have been selected to be a potential candidate for the next ruler of the country. Marcos Gigachad. Amelia explicitly told Subaru to stay with Rem. Oh, another forbidden alpha theory. Remember here? Subaru is often to break promises, but Rem with the forbidden fruit, Appa's. And what does Rem do after Emilia leaves and Subaru promises Emilia that he won't, you know, interfere? Rem glazes and Rem says, I won't make a, a I'll, I'll just turn a blind eye, right? So bad shit happened because the apples were engaged with. Mm -hmm. Orders which he ignored, broke in. Yelled at the council, self-proclaiming yes. himself to be Emilia's knight, knight yep. which insulted half of the room of professionals. I think it insulted everyone, but yes, the royal knights were even more fucking pissed because you're a white knighting in front of actual white knights. Generally trained knights, yeah. picking a fight with this guy, publicly humiliating Emilia in the process, mm -hmm. yep. and in general ends up making the whole situation be about him. Yes. Later, he ends up publicly fighting this. And what you don't even know is that this moment is all planned by Roswell L. Mathers. Roswell smiles as he allowed the events to happen and Subaru has taken the bait. Everything is according to plan. Well, ends up making the whole situation be about him. Later, he ends up publicly fighting this night guy he insulted. I wouldn't consider it a public fight. It was a public humiliation which Julius took on himself to be the bigger villain, to take the heat off of Natsuki Subaru at the cost of his own career. Even though it was against the behest and advice of his peers, and he is completely defeated. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's Amazing. bad. 
It shows that Subaru is hot-headed, more yep. concerned with himself and his pride. Yes, pride. Seven deadly sins. It, the show is intentionally showing us that this kid is consumed by the sins and he's fucking up and he needs to be aware of that to make a comeback. And his feelings of others, but at the end of the day, those are just character flaws. He's no, that is the literal story. The Witch of Envy, Seven Deadly Sins. The sins are such a prominent feature in the story. These are not character, just simple flaws. It is the entire fucking story. It's not completely irredeemable. And then the episode ends and it makes Subaru basically irredeemable. So and that's the whole point. To make this irredeemable asshole climb. But it's not even done just yet. He continues to go... Uh, get riddled in the other sins. Now he's all wrathful. He's angry as fuck, and he goes to try to make different deals with Krush, Priscilla, Anastasia. He fucks up, and constantly, over and over, he hits rock bottom, and he is seemingly more irredeemable by the episode, yet we keep watching. Why? Because it's so fascinating to have an anime portray a main character in this light. I've never seen any show where the main character looks like this, and I prefer it like this because it's not boring. It actually shows me a realistic depiction of what a 17-year-old idiot coming from Japan would act like and honestly catch him with his flaws and then to get better. It's such a good redemption story. After all that nonsense that he just put Amelia through, she is still being very patient with him. Yes. She says that knowing him, there's probably some deeper reason for why he behaved that way. Absolutely. To which Subaru, with some real clarity, admits that... Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Subaru is envious of Julius. Subaru is very egotistical because his pride will not let him bow before others right now. He thinks that Julius is taking Amelia away from him. All of these things are consuming him and you can see the mask coming off in this moment. This dialogue is wonderful. No. There was no deeper reason. It was just a matter of pride. Yeah, it was pride and envy. So what's the point? Learning this, Amelia decides that being around her probably isn't good for Subaru or her in the long run and decides to separate them, yep. to which Subaru of course objects. The thing is, with the time travel mechanic to Amelia, Subaru is behaving in a way in which he is irrationally invested in her. Absolutely agree. In this current run, we've never met Amelia before. We just randomly show up at the loot seller and save her. Amelia has no clue who this kid is, and he says, I want your name. He then gets brought to the mansion, and then he goes on to save Amelia again. But there is no fucking rhyme or reason as to why he would do that, because the first run in arc one, the episode one, that shit got reset. To Amelia, everything seems very crazy. To the point where Amelia says, I see, the idealized version of Amelia in your head must be amazing to be able to understand everything. But you can't tell me anything, because again, the fucking most likely the pact with the witch. Satala's deal, right? We cannot tell other people the secrets. Sure. He feels closer to her because he's spent a lot of time with her across several different timelines. But to Amelia, it hasn't been nearly as long. And his devotion to her appears pretty fanatical. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, she's sort of right. Mm -hmm. The fight escalates and ends up with Super... Like, I'm confused. Are you confused? Because what she's saying is correct. Like, I don't understand. We are on the same page here. What are you upset about? Brew yelling about how much Amelia owes him. Yes. About how he's done so much for her. Yes. Risking his life for her sake. And yes. And the beautiful part about this is that he's not wrong. If you count all the different loops that Amelia won't know, he's right. Everything has worked out because of him. He's risked his life time after time. Amelia might have a debt, truly. That Subaru could never pay, I mean, you know, that she could never pay back to Subaru. But even though it may be true, and there's some partial truth here and there, it comes off in the fucking worst way possible, imaginable. The voice acting here is fucking amazing. The facial exaggeration, the facial emotion, right? The expression being shown is amazing to show just how pitiful and a miserable existence he is. The mask comes off as he realizes that I was never doing this for you. I was doing this for myself. And that she doesn't even know. And before you start, yes, I know Subaru has PTSD. Yes, I know Subaru is supposed to be a flawed character and that- Okay, we're like, I am very confused because everything that she's told me tells me that she understands the story. So like, at what point 
do we go off the tracks? Because we're on the same page. This is his low point. Yes, I know that this is clearly not framed as a good thing, and we, the audience, are not supposed to be on Subaru's side right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. But from but what? Amelia's perspective, Subaru has just admitted to being a quote-unquote nice guy. Yeah. He's yelled at Amelia about how much he's sacrificed for her sake because mm -hmm. he's in love with her. Yep. And that because of that, she owes him something. Yep. I that mean, he could never pay back. The work in. He deserves some reward, right? Yep. Like she's a character. Every time the reward thing is very true. Every time we ask Amelia out on a date, it's because we've done something and we're expecting something back. That is a continuous theme in season one where he acts. He does shit, then he never asked Amelia out on a date spontaneously. Thank you, QC Diablo for the Prime. I appreciate that. If you look at season one, all of the dates were because Subaru did something and then expects Amelia to return the favor through some sort of reward. Absolutely. They're in a dating sim and he's maxed out her heart meter or something. Yes, so exactly. of course by now she should be in love with him. Yes, you are absolutely correct. I'm confused. Because that's how that works, right? And I know that that's the point that this- Yeah, that's the point of the character and you're mad because that's the point of the character. Is that it? The point of this video is you understand the character, you understand ReZero, but you don't care for it because that's the way he was portrayed. Because he should be a perfect character that sees women not as an object of desire, but someone an actual person that you wouldn't think about maxing the affection stats for. It, that, that's pretty much it, right? Like, that, that's it. At the very least, she understands the story. The other guy, the Kamalu guy, that, did, that guy didn't understand the story at all. That's why I was fucking pissed off at his logic because it was just half-baked fucking retarded fucking rage bait. She's not really rage baiting. She knows exactly what the show is about, and she's expressing, it's not for me because I don't like that kind of male character. To that, I would say, I think that kind of male character is actually so compelling because now it's not a perfect dude, and he's actually going to get better throughout the story as it progresses and literally has a redemption. But I can totally understand why she feels this way now. Scene is trying to make... But it's also a really hard pill for me to swallow when I'm still supposed to be invested in Subaru's growth. Mm. And especially how episode 18, 18 really here we seems go. to have completely missed the point it was trying to make. <laughs> okay, you can't be saying shit like that. Are you really backseating the author of this show? That, I think, is the most cringe thing ever. There's a lot of people that take, like, one fucking poli-sci class from fucking their local community college because they couldn't get into an actual fucking real college. Then they go on writing fucking essays about how games like Metal Gear Solid or other political shit, they completely miss the point and what the actual perspective is what I think. It's like... <laughs> You're really self-inserting yourself as the author right now. I'm saying that, no, they missed the point. What do you mean the point? They're the ones that decide what the story, the theme is trying to tell you. And then you are the one to then receive that and say, I accept it or I reject it. Listen, up until this point, I completely think that she's valid for having these feelings. But the moment that you fucking steer the show into your own fucking headcanon because you think that what you know is the point of the story and not what the author knows, like, come on now. When I'm still supposed to be invested in Subaru's growth, and especially how episode 18 really seems to have completely missed the point it what's was the trying point? to make. Okay, what's the point I was trying to make, lady? What is it? So, if episode... Yeah, this is a power fantasy. Absolutely. Oh, she thinks that she's tired of power fantasy. She herself, this entire video is a power fantasy, bro. She's fucking trying to let us know backseating how we should understand the story. Oh, no, we missed the point. Okay, what was the point? Episode 13 was supposed to be Subaru's lowest point. Then by episode 18, the series has basically all but broken him as a person. 
He's had to keep resetting from some of the worst endings yet and is convinced that there's nothing he can do to save everyone. Mm. So he's just going to give up and run away with Rem instead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this episode is just the worst. I had to rewatch it to make this counter argument and it just drags. Let's hear it. it. So Subaru goes on this five minute monologue where he just... This five minute monologue you're dismissing is one of the most raw moments of voice acting. Also, Subaru for the first time completely confessing all of his sins and what a kind of person he actually is. Up until this point, he has never acknowledged his faults. But finally, this is the moment in front of Rem where he declares his fault and says, I'm a piece of shit. You think that I'm a hero? I'm nobody. For I've wasted my entire life, I've accomplished nothing, yet I declare myself to be such hot shit. That itself is arrogance. Like, he goes on, he pops off. How could you reduce this as a fucking five-minute yap session? You're going into this in such a disingenuous perspective that you can't even fucking realize the god-like cinema happening before you yells at rem about how much he hates himself yeah and how he's wasted his life because he's never been genuine yes. or tried hard at anything yes and rem's response to this is you're my hero because the way that you perceive yourself is your fucking perception but i've seen the heroic Natsuki Subaru in Arc 2. I've seen what a wonderful person that person is. He saved the kids of Arlarm Village. He saved the mansion. He's validated my existence as an Oni. Something that I have such insecurities over. And he says, don't give up. It's amazing. Is to go off on her five minute monologue about how much she loves Subaru. Do you not understand Arc 2? Oh, he's a hero to her. Yes. And she just straight up lists everything that she loves about him. And I just, I frankly did not much care for that. You don't care for it because you didn't watch ReZero with an honest intention. If you've actually seen Arc 2 and you fucking carefully analyzed Arc 2, you would understand how Ren would glaze Subaru like this. It makes a lot of fucking sense. Scene. And don't get me wrong, love is a powerful, wonderful thing that should be celebrated and it can be used to redeem people from some really low depths. But I can't help but find myself a little suspicious Mm. when that love is coming from what is basically a 2D body pillow and is exp- I mean, you could say that about every girl anime character. That is a very weak argument to just say Rem is a 2D body pillow. So is every fucking other girl in anime, according to your definition, then. Expressing that love to a character that is dangerously close to an audience proxy. Dangerously close to an audience's proxy. So she's basically reducing Rem down to just like a, a mindless, just like drone robot waifu that exists just to appeal for the male power fantasy. And to that point, I don't completely disagree because I do believe that a lot of people that enjoy Rem are delusional idiots, losers in life that has never had an actual relationship with girls, don't even think of girls as actual humans, and love the power fantasy of a maid that will always be there for you no matter what, giving them your all, like all the love. It's like a never ending, it's just like always. Just even if you're undeserving, she'll be there for you. And that's the power fantasy. And I think that's what she's getting at right now. She is just painting with a broad brush that Rem only exists to give unconditional love and is a power fantasy for the average male watching isekais like this is the argument that she's giving. And to be fair to Rem, that probably is true for her. Because of the time travel mechanic, she literally has yes. only ever encountered the best the heroics. version of... Exactly. The arc to hero... So you are aware of this shit. Why are you confused? Subaru. I'm really not sure if I can accurately explain why this... Yeah, I can tell. I can tell that you're not sure how to accurately explain because you're fucking all over the place. One moment you're reducing a girl down to a 2D JPEG wife of the other, you're detailing specifically why she sees Subaru like that. It seems to me that you have all the fucking details of the show and why these characters are acting in that way, but you have a personal bias that is deep rooted with some sort of like anti-male propaganda thinking isekai is for women, isekai for men, modern isekai just panders towards the male power fantasy, therefore, 
You're trying to come up with some graphs to see why ReZero is bad. It's a pretty shitty attempt, in my opinion. The scene is so insulting to me. How obvious it is that this is a male fantasy. No shit! It's a fucking isekai created by a dude to appeal to other dudes. If you actually did the fucking statistical analysis of the survey of who his target audience is, it's gonna be a bunch of dudes with REM body pillows. Why are you confused? Because this show should be for women as well. And the whole video is called I'm Tired of Isekai. And multiple sections highlights why the modern isekai is overhyped. Mostly due to pandering towards males and completely rejecting the other half of the demographic that is for women. And that's fair, for sure. But don't come to a fucking show that knows exactly what it's doing, delivering content to its exact target audience, and act confused. What the fuck are we doing here? It is a man exposing the worst parts of himself to yes. a woman. Yes. And then her unconditional love is... The Which is proved by Arc 2 to build him back up. But you can't relate. You can't even empathize with Subaru and everything that he's gone towards Arc 3. And you think that episode 18 is so undeserved and is this peak degenerate male power fantasy. To that... Again, I think some dudes definitely feel that way about Rem, but I think a lot of people watching this show knows that's not the case. And everything that I've seen, everything I've carefully analyzed throughout the last month watching season one, I don't think is cheap at all. The thing that saves him. Maybe if media could exist in a void, I wouldn't be so bothered by it. But as is, Subaru has just yelled at this girl for 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then she's had to do all the emotional labor to put yep. him back together after his breakdown. It's almost like she is his fundamental emotional support because in her eyes, he is a hero. And again, that would be fine in concept if we didn't have things like otaku culture and the isekai genre being made as a male power fantasy. Who is this hurting? I am genuinely confused. Is your life ending because of ReZero and other Isekais with harms? I am genuinely confused. Where a guy is surrounded by beautiful women who yeah. love them unconditionally. I don't think it's accurate to portray SA or ReZero. For SAO, for sure, Kirito's got a fucking fat harm. ReZero? Not even fucking close. I don't know, this is probably uncouth of me to say, but it feels like Rem is speaking so slowly so that the audience has time to nut. And I'm sh <laughs> I've never once thought that was the case. The only time that I thought that was the case is when fucking Yoshinon from Data Life speaks. Oh my god. That girl is so fucking slow, it makes me mad. Sure, that sounds really harsh and uncalled for, but I want to make it clear that this situation would never happen if their roles were reversed. And would their roles need to be reversed? Let's up... I... I, I <laughs> Where, where are you going with this? Like, could you imagine if at the end when Subaru responds to Rem's... Like, like, can we then do, like, I, 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 am, I am confused. In arc 2, and Subaru kind of doing that with Amelia in season 2 a little bit right now, Subaru being the emotional, you know, fundamental pillar of support. And in arc 2, he... I, I don't know, like, I feel like her fucking examples, obviously she hasn't seen enough of ReZero to make those distinctions. His confession by saying that he's in love with Amelia, if mm. Rem responded like, Subaru, are you kidding me? You have no idea what I've done for you. I would actually prefer that. I've risked my life for you. I would actually, I, I agree. I wanted Rem to just deny Subaru and chase her own happiness, but she's fine with being a cut queen, so who am I to fucking interject myself to this 2D fucking fictional character? Because I love you. If it weren't for me, you would have been murdered by that pack of magic dogs. I have spent days following you around and doing whatever you asked of me because mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. How can you treat me like this? You owe me so much more than you mm. even know. You have a debt you could never pay me back. And you know what? If Rem did that, I'd say pop off, queen. That, that, I wish that fucking happened. Like, if that happened, people would eviscerate her. No! No! 
If that happened, I bet dude should be so happy about it. Like, I would have been so happy about that. A lot of people hate Subaru because he said, I love Amelia after, and Rem said, just glaze. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't think so. I, what she voice acted there is something that I wish fucking happened for Rem. It's just frustrating to watch because Rem is able to compartmentalize her own romantic feelings for him so that she can put his happiness and well-being mm. before her own happiness. Exactly, and that fucking kills me inside, that Rem is perfectly content with watching her love chase after another candidate. Rem hates Amelia, by the way. Web novel cut content, which is called Translations. Rem neither likes or dislikes Amelia. Every time she sees Amelia, she cannot fucking... She feels hatred. Even though I said she neither likes or dislikes, she cannot come to, like, accept her. This is true. This is a fucking fact. Even if you've seen the anime Memory Snow and Rem and Amelia chilling out, like, the web novel has told me, Rem has hostility. Which is something Subaru wasn't able to do with Amelia. And in the end, Subaru is rewarded for that, and Rem isn't. Mm. Subaru keeps yelling at Subaru is rewarded for that, and Rem isn't? I think that this is a character flaw of Rem. Maybe this is a sin. Maybe this is lust at display here for Rem and her succumbing to her own sins and allowing her love of her, his life, just her life, just chase after someone else and Rem is now cucked. I don't know. We can do some mental gymnastics, but I think that what Subaru did here by saying I love Amelia, I think that is completely in his right to do so. And just because Rem gave all the unconditional love does not mean she's entitled to that love, but I fucking wish that Rem would have wanted something for herself, so a piece of her own pie rather than just being a fucking cuck queen. And Rem isn't. Subaru keeps yelling at the women in his life who have done nothing but support him. But because he's too wrapped up in his own self-interest, he can't genuinely empathize or care for them. And Based on the passage uh, from the light novel she in the cut content, I think Subaru definitely can empathize for him. I mean, he, he even like, quote unquote, loves her. It's just that Amelia was the first one. Therefore, he's like staying true to her. But like, again... I'm not completely disagreeing with her in this aspect with Rem and her willingness to just be a cuck queen. And again, this is not a problem specifically with ReZero. It's a problem with a lot of shonen anime. Yeah. When you take a moment to put yourself in the shoes of the female characters, they usually aren't treated... Well, shonen literally means young boys, right? Shonen Jump is an anime for young men. Young horny kid likes the power fantasy of big booba girls, right? And fuck, Sakura's a piece of shit. You got what you deserved. I hope you get cheated on Sakura. Aren't treated very nicely. <laughs> I mean, for sure, dumb shit tropes like this happen all the time. A girl trips somehow, her tits and panties are on the main character out of nowhere. Happens all the time. Sex sells appeasing the main target audience. I get it. <laughs> and I gotta say, a world where some entitled dude yells about how he deserves the beautiful women he's in love with to love him back is not exactly what I would call an escapist fantasy for me. No, 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 no. You cannot reduce ReZero down to that. No, you're completely neglecting everything Subaru has suffered through and built himself back up and to have a redemption story. He's not getting everything he wants just that easily. You're completely neglecting all the fucking lessons and the trials that this character needs to go through and all the fucking self-reflected growth that he undergoes. Like, you're completely just leaving that part out to just, like, carve your narrative that ReZero somehow is the culmination of ma male power fantasy where the male character somehow gets all the bitches despite yelling all the time? You're reducing the show to such simple ways. That is such dishonest way of reflecting what the show's really about. In love with to love him back is not exactly what I would call an escapist fantasy for me. If I wanted to see that, I could just go walk around the city for a while in a slightly normal outfit or open Twitter. Anyway, I think that these problems are... And that's pretty much it. All right. I think that the point of the video is that 
she has an issue with the anime industry, specifically in the shonen and battle shonen and isekai genre where the main target audience are males. And for sure, I agree that most of those shows definitely has a harm element, but I don't think it's accurate to use SAO as a one-to-one -one comparison with what ReZero is. There is no fucking harm in ReZero. And if it is, maybe it's Remin Amelia, but not even, bro. Not even. ReZero is a captivating story about a relatable character who is so consumed by his sins of pride and envy and greed and everything else. And he gets wrapped up in it. And with each loop, he understands the flaws and he has the help of other characters that's seen his greatness build him back up. Not a single time do I think that he is entitled to these things. He's earned every bit of it. But this girl goes on to just have such a biased opinion for how, you know, how unfair it is for the female audience that, you know, most of these power fantasy animes doesn't, you know, does, like, give them what they want. And for sure, there is definitely, you know, power fantasy animes, right? There's definitely harms. There's definitely animes where all the dudes just get all the bitches for no fucking reason. And it is not for the female audience, right? That's just part of the game. Understand your target. And if your video is to try to make a movement to let the anime industry know, I'm sorry. It's not going to fucking do anything. But I do agree that if you want to change something, you should speak out. But this assessment of ReZero is the most dishonest, disingenuous analysis. Just cherry picking the worst parts and trying to formulate your own fucking conspiracy. Nah. Nah, bro. ReZero is an amazing story where Subaru is not a de facto harem king just getting everything for no fucking reason. If that's what you want, go watch High School DxD or SAO. I think ReZero is a fantastic isekai that is not just some generic male power, power fantasy. I think that rom-com is generic male power fantasy. And that's it for me.